The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. But before you come in, stop a minute. And look up at the night sky. Familiar? But there are those who will tell you that our sky is not all that familiar. That more and more it is filled with unidentified flying objects. And they will offer you stronger and stronger factual proof that they are there. Is it true? Are they really UFOs? Or to use a less scientific phrase... Flying saucers. Well, Pete, did I steer you wrong? What do you mean, Bryce? A spacecraft. You just sighted it, didn't you? Uh, one way or another, I've seen quite a few stars tonight. Including your first UFO. Our mystery drama, A Message from Space was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Buick has some good news for procrastinators. Even though you've waited, you can still enjoy the comfort and luxury of a full-size Buick. Even better, your Buick dealer just might give you an irresistible deal on a 78 LeSabre right now. But do hurry, because a lot of other procrastinators have been waiting for this kind of news, too. You equal Sabre. Yes, you can, at your Buick dealers. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The term flying saucer was first used by a Texas farmer who saw one over his ranch in 1878. That's right, 100 years ago. For this information, I'm indebted to Arthur Shuttlewood, one of the foremost authorities in the world on UFOs. This is a story set down in the most part exactly as it was related by another recognized authority in the field, Bryce Bond. Of course, you must decide for yourself. The mystery, which ended in Warminster, England, began in the office of a features editor of one of America's largest newspapers. It's open. Come on in. You want to see me, Prez? Come in. Come on in. Close the door. And don't call me Prez. Do I have to be that formal and call you Mr. Riley? I am your nephew. Well, you can call me by my initials like everyone else does. Well, I do. Rx. Prescription. Translation, Prez. All right, all right. Anyway, you're not my my real nephew, except once removed. <laughs> you can't wriggle out of it, Uncle. They still grumble around the paper about nepotism because you had me promoted to your department. I grabbed you off hard news because you're a better feature writer. Now, I've got an assignment for you. Shoot. You ever hear of a place called uh, Warminster, England? No, uh, it doesn't spring to mind. That's in Wiltshire. It's one of the most ancient historical areas in Britain. Sitting right in the middle of burial mounds. They're called uh, barrows. Some of them date back 45,000 years. Oh, it's a cozy little spot. Has it got any other claim to fame? Well, in this quiet little backwater of country within the last 15 years, there have been hundreds of peculiar phenomena. Something cited, not by hysterics or nuts, reputable people, head postmaster, clerics, hospital matron, flyers, engineers, so on, you know. They all bear witness to their existence. To say nothing of many photographs which have been subjected to rigid spectrographic tests and others. Yeah, to their existence. To what, to what existence? The objects that have been sighted. UFOs. <laughs> Flying saucers again? Visitors from outer space? Oh, you got to be kidding. You don't believe in them? Of course not. Good. That's exactly why I want you to go to Warminster. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Rx. Look, I'm, I'm no scientist. What am I supposed to do, take pictures? No, no, I want a series of articles for the magazine section. You know, color stuff. Lay it on as thick as you like. Debunk the whole crazy business. Well, that's okay by me. But how do I go about it? 
Well, I'll give you some contacts. The rest you make by yourself. You have to get enough facts to prove the whole thing is nuts. It's duck soup. Thanks for the plum. At that point, of course, I hadn't yet met Pete Heron. But a meeting was to come shortly, at the beginning of the experience which was to change his whole life and lead to a sudden and breathtaking climax. I was on my way to visit an old friend of mine in Warminster, England, but the nearer I got to the town, the traffic became unbelievable. Stop and go, stop and go, in this quiet English countryside. A few miles short of the little town, I abandoned my taxi and decided to walk it. A decision I applauded myself for because the traffic had ground to a total halt. Uh, I'm afraid that's not going to do you any good. There's a little bridge up ahead. That's a complete bottleneck. If anything stalled there, you're going to be stuck for a while. Uh, the ugly American. Uh, I should learn the virtue of patience. <laughs> uh, particularly the British variety. When they put up with things they don't gripe, they grin. <laughs> Object lesson for this American. Noted. And we'll try to learn from example. So you're American too, aren't you? Guilty as charged. Uh, you're not guilty. You're just plain smart. I guess I should have had the courage and the good sense to hoof it too. <laughs> I, I can't claim either. Only some prior knowledge. I, I had a taxi, but I bailed out when I saw the jam. I realized from experience it was one of those hopeless evenings. What do you mean? Well, it looks like it's going to be a good night. The low cloud cover seems to be lifting. And if you're sensitive, you can just... just feel the magnetism bristling in the air. I think you'll see a UFO tonight. What? Isn't that what you're here for? Yeah, uh, in a sense. <laughs> what are you, clairvoyant or something? I have no need of ESP or extrasensory knowledge to deduce that. What do you think all the rest of these people are here for? You mean all this traffic is just people who are screwy enough to think they might sight a flying saucer? That's right. Oh, I don't mean they're screwy. Just that they expect a sighting. And probably will get their wish. <laughs> who are you? Oh, I'm, excuse me, I, I didn't mean to be rude. I'm Pete Heron. I'm Bryce Bond. Well, I'm a newspaper man. Yes, uh, I know. Hey, you made my day. I mean, I always hope somebody reads my articles, but I never expect them to remember the byline. Uh, what do you do, Mr. Bond? Let's just say for the moment that I'm in communications, too. Uh, radio and other media. You're here to do an article or a series on UFOs. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that what brings you here? In part. I have been here before. Oh, well, then clue me in. You ever see any action? Oh, yes. Many times. Oh, you mean you actually believe you saw something from outer space around here? <laughs> I didn't say where they were from. Just that I've seen them. And so I'm sure have a good many of these other folks in the traffic tied up here. <sighs> oh, come on. Look, what kind of people fall for this malarkey? People just like us. You're staying at the inn when you get to Warminster. Yes. You? Yes. Listen, uh, you seem tuned in on this whole deal. Uh, could we have dinner together? Or, uh, on me, of course. I mean, on the paper. Oh, we'll have dinner together. But I'll pay my own freight. Oh, why? It's a justifiable expense. <laughs> well, I really have to move on. I have an appointment to keep. Can I say something? I don't know, maybe it's, it's out of line, but... No, I'll say whatever thing you want. Well, you know, you're, uh, you're kind of an oddball, aren't you? I mean, uh, look, just thinking back, things you said, they weren't questions, they were more statements and, I don't know, like my byline. You haven't really read any of my stuff, have you? No. Well, then, uh, how do you know so much about me? Uh, why I'm here and, uh, all that? Right where you are, you're sitting in an electrical matrix of energy beyond belief or most human conception. You'd be surprised to know how much knowledge and communication can be carried on its waves. Well, meet you at 6.30 in the common room at the inn. <laughs> if you ever get out of a traffic jam. About a brandy, Bryce? Uh, no, thank you, but don't let me stop you. Oh, I'll pass that, too. Uh, look, please go on. Look, you were telling me about the uh, uh, magic triangle. Well, 
It's formed if you draw a line, say, from Glastonbury to Avebury to Salisbury and back to Glastonbury. Warminster lies right in the middle of it. At a point where all the ley lines intersect. The what? The ley lines. Invisible lines of electromagnetic energy. How do you spell ley? L-E-Y. It's an obsolete old English word for a flame or a blaze or a fire. You can see the obvious derivation. Ancient people knew about these ley lines? It seems incontrovertible. This was a cradle of early English civilization. The burial mounds everywhere attest to that. King Arthur is supposed to be buried in Glastonbury. The Druids built their temple at Stonehenge. More than a temple as we know today, scientifically. Really a giant computer from which the date, star shifts, eclipses, equinoxes, and solstices can be reckoned. <laughs> Heaven knows how many other universal discoveries that we consider modern discoveries were common knowledge to these people 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. There's an even bigger one at the north of the triangle, at Avebury. And right in the center is this matrix of energy. But what is this energy? Electromagnetic, psychic, spiritual. Each man may have his own explanation. Well, why here? Why in this little dump? I suppose the best answer to that is, why not? <laughs> you're skeptical. <laughs> yeah, you're too darn right. Then it's uh, time to go to up to Cradle Hill and see for yourself. By the time you come down tonight, or tomorrow morning, you may have changed your mind. You want to bet? Perhaps I can't guarantee you a UFO. But I think I can guarantee you that you will see something that will change your mind. I went out into the soft but damp and chill English night with my new friend, Bryce Bond. Friend. <laughs> there is something about him that's compelling. Some inner strength that kind of gets to you. We drove a few miles in my rented car and stopped beside a field. There was only one other car parked there. You can cut the motor, Pete. We'll go by foot from here on. Check. Uh, there's a flashlight in the glove compartment. Okay. I have one, too, but I don't think we'll need them. The moon's pretty bright. Shall I leave the parking lights on? Better not. We might be all night, if you're up to it. Oh, I'm, I'm up to it. Good. Let's go. Is there a, a gate or a road or something? We duck through the fence and across the fields. Well, the moonlight is pretty bright. You get through all right. Yeah. yeah. Where'd they all go, by the by? The crowd is over on Cradle Hill. This is Star Hill. Yeah, well, why'd you bring me here? It's a good question for which I don't have a definitive answer. In terms we both understand, can I call it a gut hunch? <laughs> you got some antenna that sends you the message I might get to see something here? Give your own antenna a chance and maybe you will. I think I'll let you climb the rest of the hill yourself. Then if anything does turn up, you'll know I had nothing to do with it. What's on the other side? Just some wheat fields and quiet, rolling Wilshire country. Plus whatever else you might see, you're on your own. The moonlight was bright, of course. But with that soft brightness that leaves everything just a little uncertain in outline. It was as if Bryce had walked away into water... One minute I saw him, and the next he was gone as the night swallowed him up. I walked on up toward the top of the hill with the corona of moonlight outlining it. And as I came over the top, I witnessed something which in all my dreams I could never have imagined. Now, what do you suppose Pete Heron, success-oriented, skeptical but otherwise completely normal and totally adjusted to life as we live it, saw on the other side of that hill. Well, you're an intelligent listener, and you have probably gone way ahead of me since we have been building to this moment. But don't be too sure. There is something unexpected beyond the supernatural. At least for Pete Heron. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Let me see. Where were we? 
Oh, of course. Just coming over the brow of Star Hill in the moonlight, magically diffused through the damp, cool, early spring English weather. A healthy young skeptic, Pete Heron, sent by his newspaper to write a series of feature articles on the appearance of UFOs, seems about to meet the ultimate test face to face. So, let's meet it with him. As I came over the brow of the hill, I'd been looking beyond to some gently rolling wheat fields, fading away out of the bright forelight to murky moon shadows. But in the middle of this dreamy landscape, below me and to the right, a strange thing was happening to the swaying waist-high wheat. Something like a giant fan spinning counterclockwise was laying a mirror image on the wheat below which was blown back flat to the ground, trembling as if some whirling saucer from out of space was settling to a landing. And then... It was there. Circular. Perhaps 50 feet across. Light slits like portholes shimmering till the craft, or whatever it was, stopped spinning and came to rest. And suddenly it was glowing so brightly I had to shield my eyes and turn away. And when I turned back and opened them, there were still rings of overexposure exploding in front of my eyes. And the craft was gone. But something else was there. Hello? Hello. Did you see it? What? The spacecraft. What would you like to call it? The UFO? I thought I saw something, but... Hey, did you see it? Of course I did. Hey, where did you pop up from, anyway? What do you mean? I came here just the same as you. You did? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I parked my car right behind a little blue hatchback. That must be yours, huh? Uh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I ought to introduce myself. I'm, uh, I'm Pete Harron, World Features... A reporter. Uh, yeah, right. Well, sort of. A uh, feature writer, you know. Human interest. Color stories. Tongue-in-cheek. Or exposés. Debunking the bunkum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, you? Uh, you must be in the business, too, huh? Yes. You could call me a reporter. My name is... Maru. Uh-huh. Who are you with? I don't think you'd ever heard of my outfit. Aren't you missing the real story? What? Oh, 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 the, the, the thing. It, it was so bright, I couldn't look at it anymore. But I... Hey, it's gone. You mean you can't see it anymore? <laughs> yeah, if, if I ever did see it. I mean, self-hypnosis, uh, induced delusion. <laughs> you sure you saw it? Oh, yes. Mm. What did it look like to you? Just like all the others. All the others, huh? Oh, you mean you've, you've seen spacecraft before? Huh? Oh, yes. How many? I haven't bothered to keep a record. Too many to count, I should think. Here? Around here. And... Other places. What other places? Why should I tell you? You wouldn't believe me. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Don't go. Why not? There's nothing more for me here tonight. There won't be any more. How do you know? I know. If you really want to write a good story for your feature editor, you'd better do a little more legwork. What do you mean? Go down. And examine the field more carefully. Aren't you going down there, too? No. You see, I don't have to be convinced. You're the one who has to be educated. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Don't go away sore. I'm not sore. But I have to leave. Uh, well, I'll go with you. I prefer to be alone. But look, uh, uh, Maru, wasn't that, wasn't that it? Maru was the name I gave you. What's your other name? Why do you ask? Well, it would kind of help so I could get to see you again. 
When you want to see me again, you won't need a name to find me. Maru, wait a minute. You... Oh. I had started after Maru, but a root or a rock ledge tripped me and I fell headlong. I suppose I must have hit my head on something and been out for a while. Because when I became conscious again, the moon had climbed to its zenith in the sky. I scrambled to my feet. There was enough light to see all the way down the hill to my car. It was still there, but the other car, the little blue hatchback, was gone. I turned back to where the illusion of the UFO had been and saw someone down in that wheat field silently surveying it. In the moon brightness, I could see it was Bryce Bond. So I went down to join him. Well, did I steer you wrong? What do you mean? The spacecraft. You sighted it, didn't you? Uh, well, one way or another, I've seen quite a few stars tonight. Including your first UFO. No, no, that was just some sort of a hallucination. You still don't believe? Even with the evidence right here in front of you? What evidence? We're standing on the perimeter of a field of delicate wheat. From anywhere around the edge of it to the center, there is not one mark of passage. The wheat stands unbroken. But the center of it is one of a deep impression, where the wheat churned flat in a counterclockwise direction. The earth is scorched beneath it. If something didn't land there, how do you account for it? Oh, a sudden squall, uh, when the wind... In an English summer? Even so, the edges would have been affected, too. Don't you believe the evidence of your own eyes? I don't know. I mean, uh... Did you see the girl I was talking to? What girl? Well, she suddenly showed up on uh, top of the hill there. She said her name was Maru. Hmm. I don't know anybody by that name. <laughs> it does sound like a phony, doesn't it? It's just as phony as all the rest. Is that the way you really feel, Pete? Now, look, I'm sorry, Bryce. I, I, I don't mean to be a dog in the manger. It's uh, just that I feel like one. Hey, I took a fall up there. I gave my head a whack. Let's have a look. Uh, you, you feel dizzy? No. Uh, just, I don't know, a little woozy, I guess. We'd better get you back to the car and, and home to bed. Hey, look, I wouldn't kid you. I could use some shut-eye. I, I think I still have jet lag. I should have waited another day before I started out on my scientific explorations. You mightn't have been so lucky another night. Lucky? Yes. Whether you want to admit it or not, you did have some visions. <laughs> I'm afraid in my book that's just what they were. My timing got out of sync. Maybe everything I saw was after I fell and hit my head. Including the girl? What did she look like? Oh, man. What a dream. <laughs> Great violet eyes. Uh, skin like... Like mother of pearl. Long, dark hair. And she smelled like... Like, like a mixture of roses and lily of the valley. Yeah, something like that. Like uh, a summer garden. You have been fortunate. Well, yeah. At least I dream in technicolor. You refuse to count your blessings. If that girl were for real, I might. I'll look for her tomorrow, but I don't even know her second name or what town she lives in. She was out of this world. Hasn't it occurred to you that is exactly what she must have been? I was too beat and my head ached too much to bother to reply or think about anything more. I let Bryce drive the car back to the inn and I hit the sack. Some gung-ho rooster woke me up at sunrise. I looked at my watch and I'd had just about five hours rest. But I knew I couldn't get back to sleep. I was going looking for Maru. I didn't have any luck, which was why I was back in the car after dark and headed again for Star Hill. I'd avoided Bryce Bond all day, sneaked out of the hotel after dinner, afraid to admit that at least one thing he'd said had shaken me. Maru. Maybe he was right, and she was out of this world. But the drive, the need to see her again, was so strong, I... I was almost ready to become a believer. It was very peaceful on the top of the hill. The moon had risen earlier and I could see the wheat field with the impression, that strange inexplicable impression still there. 
I had brought a sweater and I was warm, and the last thing I remembered before I dozed off was Maru. And how much I wanted to believe I hadn't lost her forever. I told you. When you wanted to find me, you wouldn't need a name. I've been hunting for you all day. Everywhere. You must have been looking in the wrong places. Well, at last I found the right one. Where two worlds meet. What does that mean? Just what it says. A point in time where the lines cross. What lines? Force. Energy. Communication. Maru. Are you for real? I'm just as real as you. But you're not a reporter. Oh, yes. I've already written my account. That's where I've been today. What about you? Uh, I haven't had time. You were more important. Why? Ah... Uh... I don't know. I... Yes, yes, I do. I... It's crazy. It uh, doesn't make any sense, but... I guess I'm in love with you. It makes all kinds of sense, Pete. What? You mean... You can't mean that you love me. Well, of course I do. That's what it's all about. Oh, I, I, I think you're putting me on again. Oh, no. I have to go now. No, no, wait. Where? There. <sighs> the UFO. It's in the depression in the wheat field. But where, where? Where did it come from? It's been there all the time. If you only looked hard enough. You see, the portal is open. They're waiting for me. Oh, no, but you can't go away. I must. They're calling me. What? What are you? What are you, some, some kind of a prisoner? <laughs> oh, of course not. Yeah, but who are they? What are they? What's inside that thing? Knowledge. Peace. Love. I don't believe it. Come see for yourself. Take my hand. I can't, I can't. I'm afraid... When you're filled with love, there's no room for fear. I... I can't, Maru. I'm... I'm still afraid. You are not yet ready. I must go now. Will I see you again? That will be up to you, Pete. Up to you. With lightning speed, Morrow was suddenly through that strange portal that closed like a mouth and became an indistinguishable part of the hull. Immediately, the thing glowed with a light so intense I had to shield my eyes. I heard a great whoosh and the hum like a dynamo drummed in my ears, spinning away like some giant top into the vastness of space. When I could look again, it was gone. There was nothing left but the depression in the field, and I started to run towards it like a madman. I've never felt so alone in all my life. These words of Pete's, reported to me by Bryce Bond, still ring in my ears. The presence and reality of that strange UFO sends tingles up and down my spine. A reaction to the unknown. But nothing in this eerie otherworld tale could have prepared me for the astounding climax. I'll return with that shortly and the rest of Act Three. An Englishman named Arthur Shuttlewood, in his book, Key to the New Age, has said, one must see one of these amazing phenomena to believe it, and there is no such thing as an expert in matters ufological. Individual experience is the key to all the answers. Well, now, I've never seen one, and I'm sure most of you haven't either, so we certainly can't qualify as experts. 
The only person I know who even comes near it is Bryce Bond. So, let's turn this account back to him. I was concerned about young Pete Heron after that knock on the head. He had remained incommunicado all day, and I was busy myself. So when I returned to the inn and found he had gone out after dark, I suspected where he had left for. So I borrowed a car to drive out to Star Hill. I came over the brow of the hill by full moonlight to see Pete rush suddenly from the edge of the wheat field to that curious depression, only to stop suddenly, his shoulders drooping, forlorn. Pete! Yeah? Oh, Bryce. How long have you been here? I just arrived. Then uh, you, uh, you didn't see it. Are you F.O.? Yeah. No. And you didn't see her either. You mean the girl you met last night, Maru? Yes. No, I didn't. I could have gone with her. Oh, what's the use? I, I didn't. I didn't have the guts. Come on, Pete, take it easy. How's the head? <laughs> Solid bone, clean through. Why couldn't I... Oh, you mean the bump last night? Oh, it's that's nothing. It's just a scrape. Sure you're all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all right, except for... For what happened tonight? Yeah. You want to talk about it? Maybe I do. There's so much to sort out. Yeah, 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 I do. But not here. I... I need a drink. C come on, I got a bottle in my room. Aren't you coming? Right with you. Yes. Yes, they've been here. I can feel the warmth. The electricity still pulsating in the air. And that smell. That glorious scent. Roses and lily of the valley. Yeah, that's her smell. It's the way they all smell, Pete. Come on. Let's go talk. What am I going to do, Bryce? I, I never should have come up here. No way you could have stopped it. Oh, sure I could. Sure, our ex is a tough man to cross, but he's not wholly unreasonable. I didn't mean because of your uncle. Oh, and I have a heart. I mean, you're not going to tell me it was, it was my karma or my fate or something, are you? Look, take your own word. It all adds up to the same thing. Look, Bryce, I can't believe any of this mumbo-jumbo. Come on, it's against everything I've ever been taught. I've ever learned. I've ever believed in for myself. Then what are you so upset about? Hang it, Bryce. I have been through a wild set of hallucinations or nightmares. Sure, I'm shook. Why? If that's all they were, just write them off. How can I do that? I'm beginning to think I've gone around the bend. That I'm a nut. <laughs> then what do you think caused these hallucinations? I don't know. What are you going to write about in your article? You're going to poke fun at all us certifiable nuts who run around saying that we actually see just what you have? i tell you what I want to do. I want to put my tail between my legs and run. I would. If it weren't for her. Maybe that's why she was sent. Sent? To keep you from running. Obviously, they don't want you to. Well, why would they care about me? Hasn't it occurred to you that you may have been chosen? The only person I want to choose me is Maru. I don't care about them. Who the devil are they, anyway? People like you and me, a higher order, of course. Yeah? Well, where do they come from? From another planet. From another point in time. Perhaps they are right here with us. Living in a world alongside ours. In a time continuum with us. But what do they want with us? To help us. To guide us. Why? I believe because they are extensions of us. Another evolvement in the pattern of life. Another step upwards on the road to peace and perfect resolution. Oh, not all this and reincarnation, too. Why not? Listen. Listen, I don't want to open that can of beans, huh? I have enough trouble swallowing the UFO business. Help me, Bryce. If I can. Well... All right, tell me, why now? Okay, why at this point in time do they suddenly start showing up? Well, there are a lot of theories on that. I won't go into them because I don't believe it is only, as you say, at this point in time. What about Elijah's fiery chariot or Moses' burning bush or Ezekiel's wheel within a wheel 
or even the star of Bethlehem. We know that no star could come into our system without overturning the axial tilt of the Earth, even a comet. So why not a UFO? You have eventually to take it on faith. It's a matter of what you believe. Well, I don't know what I believe anymore. Then stay. Write your articles. Once you start to put your thoughts down in black and white, I, I think it'll all come clear. So I stayed. Nights, I waited on the hill, but nothing happened. Days, I wrote my articles. And three days after I sent off the first one, another visitor from another world contacted me. Okay, Rx, you don't have to try to shout all the way across the Atlantic. I can What's hear... all this gibberish you mailed over here for the first article? I'm only reporting the facts, Rx. What facts? Are you drunk or something? All this gobbledygook about seeing UFOs? Well, that's what you sent me over here to report on, Rx. Well, you sound as if you believe this hogwash. Uh, I just reported what I saw. Well, you couldn't have seen what you said you did. There ain't any such thing as UFOs. There just ain't any such animal. And that, that, that girl business... Look, I didn't ask you for a comic strip. Violet eyes. Hooey. I want the truth on this story. If you don't believe that's what I'm reporting, maybe you better come over here and see for yourself. Well, I might just take you up on that. You just stay put at that end. I suppose I should have waited for the old boy, but I didn't know what plane he was coming in on, or even perhaps if he mightn't have changed his mind. Besides... When darkness came that night, wild horses couldn't have dragged me away from Star Hill and the off chance that this might be the night for Maru's return. I left word at the inn where I'd gone, and Bryce was nice enough to say he'd keep an eye out for my uncle. I almost turned back at one point, but some inner voice drove me on. It was chilly and dark on Star Hill, and this night watch seemed interminable. Then, shortly after midnight, the air was suddenly warm and balmy, and the field below the hill was bathed in golden light, and the sound of it came. The strange portal in the spacecraft gaped open like a mouth, and from it, Morrow came straight to me. We meet again, Pete. I thought you might never come. I hated to waste the time. What time? Till you believed. You believe now, don't you? Yes. Yes. Of course I believe. But I don't understand. You will. It will all be made clear to you. Shall we go? Where? To the craft. To meet the others. What do you feel? I don't know. The air is warm... You could bask in it, sunbathe in it. I feel alive, liberated, and yet at peace. Don't you understand? They're reaching out to you, communicating, telling you you are not alone in the universe. It's a message of love. Well, I don't need them. Only you, Maro. You're the one I love. We'll have each other, my darling. But don't you see that is not enough? It's got to reach out, that love, and wash over everyone else. Till we are all one, as we are in our world. Perfect love. Found it, Mr. Bond. What's that reckless young fool doing up there on that, that devil's hill? What do you people try to do to him, anyhow? That's a sensitive boy for all he tries to act hard-boiled. We, whoever we are, we're not trying to do anything to him. What's happening to him is within himself. Ah, don't give me that double talk. How do I get to this uh, witch's carnival? If you like, I'll take you there myself. I don't like any of it, but I'll make the best of it. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> The top of the hill wore a corona of light, which I thought was the rising moon, and never afterward could convince him was anything different. For as we breasted the rise, we saw totally different things. Now there he is, there he is. Pete! Pete! Stop! What's that young fool doing? He's walking to the middle of that wheat field by moonlight by himself. He's not by himself. 
Can't you see the girl with him? Oh, I may be old, but there's nothing the matter with my eyes. There's no girl. He's alone. Where does he think he's going? To the spacecraft that's waiting. The door is open for them. What are you talking about? What spacecraft? Are you out of your mind? That's, that's an empty field. Don't be too sure. Watch. What I saw was Pete and Maru, hand in hand as they walked to that shining ship, outlined in the aura of golden light as they stepped through the portal, and suddenly... Good Lord. He disappeared. Like that, into, into thin air. Not into thin air, Mr. Riley. Listen. Listen to what? I, I don't hear anything. I suppose not. But then you didn't see either. Well, there's nothing to see. An empty field and feet just vanished. What kind of a trick is this? No trick, sir. He just chose to go with a girl and love. Chose and was chosen. There was no girl. He was alone. Oh, no, Mr. Riley. He will never be alone again. Impossible? Fantasy? If you wish. But within this same triangle, in a town named Shepton Mallet, with snow everywhere on the ground, a man once walked off his front porch and disappeared from the face of the earth. Without, incidentally, leaving a single footprint. You see? Nothing is really impossible. I'll be back shortly. If it's a nice night tonight, wherever you are, or if not this one, the first one, when you can see the stars, step outside and look up. Is it the same familiar sky? Or can you spot any unidentified flying objects wheeling with the stars? Perhaps you can't. But remember, you have many fellow human beings who think they can and who are sure we are not alone. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Bryce Bond, Jana Rowland, and Joe Silver. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Something about his appearance may have buried itself in your subconscious, and now it's been released into your dreams. Doc, he scares me. Why should a man like this scare you? Because... Because he's going to kill me. Now, how can you say that? I know exactly where he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, and how he's going to do it. How can you be so sure? Because I already seen him do it. Every night for a week, I've been having the exact same dream, just me and him. He points his gun at me, and he kills me. But why? I don't know, and I don't care. All I know is he kills me. Now, you tell me, am I or am I not crazy? This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.